Welcome dear students, today we will learn about CDNs or SACAs, major nomadic group of Central Asia. The objectives of the study are the origin of the SACAs, their conquest of Indian subcontinent and their coinage system. The term SACA or CDN refers to the nomadic people who lived in Northern Asia and Europe. The first reference of them is in Herodotus's Historia and Dyrus first's cuneiform inscriptions where they are described as three distinct and widely separated tribes. The Saka's history is inextricably interwoven with tribal movements from the neighborhood of China. They were compelled to move southwest by the Yuchi. As a result, the Yuchi ended Saka rule in Bactria, causing their ruler to flee to Chipin. Further, Saka advancement was hampered by the Indo-Greeks in Kabul, forcing them to turn westward in the direction of Herat and subsequently towards Sistan. After them, this region was given the name Sakistan. The stream of invasion was thus diverted into another channel as Parthia now operated as a barrier against any tribal movement from Upper Asia, forcing the Sakas to go into the country of the Lower Indus. According to Herodotus, the Greeks referred to the nomadic tribes of Southern Russia and Middle Asia as Scythians, whereas the Persians referred to all of the Scythian tribes as Sakas. In order to separate them from the Aral region, Mesogoti and the Pontic city of Scythians, existing research refers to the ancient tribes of Northern and Eastern Central Asia and Eastern Turkestan as Sakas. These tribes were of Iranian descent and their main livelihood was pastoral nomadism. When there was only one Scythian tribe under Persian control, they were referred to as the Sakas in the oldest inscriptions. To put it another way, they gave the term Saka a clear ethnic connotation. The area in the northeast of Europe and along the northern Black Sea coast was known by the ancient Greeks as Scythia. The earliest tribal people to live along the Black Sea's shores were the Scythians. The Huns took control of this area after the Scythians. The Altai mountain range, which is located in the region of Eurasia between the river Danube and the Tiansha mountains, where the Bronze Age first emerged, was also referred to as the Scythian homeland. The Chimerians, a nomadic people said to be of Indo-European descent, were driven from the steepies of southern Russia between 750 and 700 BC by the Scythians, who arrived from Turkestan and western Siberia and established their dominance in the area. The Scythians, whose ancestry is Iranian, embraced a nomadic lifestyle across the steeps of Iranian territory, which is now Russia's Turkestan. King Atis, who established his rule after uniting various tribal communities, was the most powerful king of Scythia. In southern Russia and Crimea, sometimes known as Ukraine, the Scythians built a powerful empire, that is, Crimean Peninsula, lying between Black Sea and Sea of Azov. This empire lasted from 5th century BC until the 2nd century BC. The Scythians expelled the Chimerians from southern Russia between 750 and 700 BC after migrating there from the Turgai region and the Ural river. From the 7th to the 3rd century BC, the Scythians continued to rule over the Russian steepy. They entered the Assyrian Empire after passing through the Durban Gateway. The neighboring cultures of the Persians, Greeks and Mesopotamians were threatened by the Scythians. They 
engaged in wars with the Achaemenid Empire on a regular basis. Eastern Scythians were attacked by Zingnu, Yuchi, and Wusun in the 2nd century BC. And Macedonia destroyed the Western Scythians in the 4th century BC. The Scythian people that migrated into sections of Central, Northern, and Western Asia during the 2nd and 4th centuries BC were known as indo scythians when they eventually moved towards South Asia. The invasion is carried out by other tribes like the Zingnu and Yuchi in the 2nd century BC caused the Scythians of Turkestan to decline. And finally, as the Huns advanced to, towards the west, they drove them out. The Iranian nomads, known as Saka by the Persians and Scythian by the Greeks, were an indispensable link in Central Asia between the developing civilizations of the Middle East and China. The nomads were best recognized for their mastery in archery when mounted on a war chariot or horseback. It is well known that Scythian men adore beard. To protect their ears from the high pressure winds of the plains, they wore pointed hats, white trousers and tunics. Their primary weapon was a bow and they rode with a horse. There were no houses of Scythians. They used to travel in wagons, which were small carts with four wheels and were drawn by horses or cattle. Their mobile houses were thus wagons. Large, well-organized groups that included assistance workers in their wagons moved in unison. It appeared to be a migratory city on wheels with wagons accompanying them. Therefore, the Scythians used covered wagons and carts in addition to horses for their seasonal mobility through the steeps. In actually, these wagons served as their tribes' yurts. These carts served as their nomadic communities' yurts or stable huts on the ground when they stayed somewhere. Their gold treasure was preserved in plaques and carpets that were distinctive to Scythian art and kept in a secure trusteeship. The Scythian tribes were totally autonomous but they created a well-functioning state system that survived for many years. This state was divided into six main provinces, each of which had a number of nomis or districts within it. A nomarch or governor supervises these districts. Despite the lack of evidence for the Scythian provinces, Istvan Zimoni explains that nomis may represent various nomadic tribes or groups that the Scythians assimilated. They had a vital role in the Scythian military organization and the military chiefs of all these tribal groups used to assemble to pay tribute on behalf of the entire nomadic group. The Scythian tribes were primarily feudal in structure. Now, Indian and Central Asian contexts. The Sakas are also known as Scythians and in Indian texts, the Scythians and Parthians are occasionally referred to as Saka Pahlava. At times, it becomes impossible to distinguish between a Saka and a Pahlava based just on their names. Even yet, several families of kings who were connected to various northwest, northern and western regions have been identified as Saka. The Kabul Valley was not crossed by the Indian subcontinent's Saka raiders. Additionally, there is no proof that the Aziz dynasty ever ruled Begram. It has frequently been argued that the Sakas could not have reached India from the north through the high mountain ranges of the Himalayas, Karakoram and Pamiris, and that instead they might have crossed the Bolan Pass from Drangiana, that is modern Sistan, Arashosia, that is modern Kandhar and the Brahai mountains into the region of the lower Indus region. However, significant new information has emerged that necessitates a fundamental re-evaluation of past views as a result of the big discoveries made by a renowned researcher named A. S. Dhani 
After the construction of the Karakoram Highway across the mountains from Pakistan to Chinese Turkestan. At the main river crossing at Shetal, Chilas, Gilgit and Hunza, Dani collected huge evidences of Saka petroglyphs. Recognizing the key routes taken by traders, soldiers and pilgrims that crossed the high Korakaram mountains in the early historical period. Petrographs in Chilaz depict Saka horsemen and troops as well as representations of Sutupas and the Ibex. A chain of Kharoshti inscriptions on the sacred rock of Hunza from the same time period features numerous mounted riders and Ibex as well as the names of the Saka and Pahlava kings. Various branches of the Sakas are represented by coins and other artifacts. It is believed that one branch made its home in Afghanistan. Punjab was home to a different branch of the Sakas whose capital was Taxila. Another governed from the region of Mathura. A fourth branch developed in western and central India where they maintained their power until the middle of the 4th century AD. The Sakas were able to undermine Greek dominance over Bactria. The nomad hordes of Central Asia included the Sakas. They were compelled to leave their home on the Bactrian frontier and accompany the Greeks into India by another Central Asian tribe, the Yuchi. At the expense of the regional Indo-Greek emperors, the Sakas gradually expanded their dominance over India's northern and northern western provinces. The history of Sakas in India can be reconstructed using a variety of sources. Early Chinese writings as well as Greek and Roman annals make mention of these people. Additionally, helpful sources are epigraphic and numismatic ones. The Mahabhashya contains the oldest mention of the Sakas in Indian literature. Along with the Kambojas and Yavanas in the far north, the Sakas are mentioned in the Puranic and Epic literature. Moiz or Moga, who established Saka power in Gandhara, was the first Saka ruler to rule in India. Moiz is recognized through a number of coins and inscriptions, one of which includes a date. The establishment of the Buddha's relics in a stupa during the reign of Moiz is documented by a date on a copper plate inscription discovered in Taxila. Even if he was afterwards joined by the other Sakas who entered the Indus Valley from Sistan, it now seems obvious that Moiz must have utilized the north route to take Taxila from the Indo-Greek king Apollo II. He is a member of the first generation of Saka emperors in the Indus Valley, who ruled before Asia's first major dynasty which began in 57 BC. With the evidence from the Parthian history that any moment of the Sakas from Sistan to join the northern invaders should be sometime after the death of the Mithradates II in 88 BC, a date for Moiz or the Saka invasion in the era 85 to 70 BC makes sense. The Sakas are from the northwest India according to Sanskrit literature. In the far northwest, past Sagala, the Mahabharata places them with the Yavanas, that is Greeks, and the Pahlavas, that is Indo-Parthians. Additional details regarding the Saka dynasty in the Indus Valley can be found in the Kala Katsariya Kathanka, a work by the Jaina sect that is unknown in date. The Saka tribe of northwest India are described as indo scythians by classical sources. According to Ptolemy, the entire region along the Indus River course was generally referred to as indo scythia Patelin, Abiria and Saurashtra were all part of it. The sequence of Kharoshti inscriptions of the Sakas and coins of the Muiz and the rulers of the Aziz dynasty have been discovered in the Indus Valley, mostly in the Punjab, Swat and the foothills of Kashmir. In the Taxila excavations, several copper coins from the Moise and Aziz dynasties were discovered. Moise, who lived in the first part of the first century BC, was the earliest Saka king in the Indus Valley. A defaced inscription from Maria in the Salt Range 
some 160 kilometers south of Taxila and with similar paleography, appears to be dated year 58 and contains the word Moyasa. Other inscriptions from the same period have been discovered at Fatehang, 16 kilometers south of Taxila, and Shahdor, possibly in the Agrore Valley, both with dates of year 60. Stain Kano speculates that the indo scythian Empire in the Indus was founded around 88 BC. The time Mithridates second of Parthia passed away. Moses imitate Indo-Greek coin designs like those of Demetrius, who was likely the first Greco-Bactrian ruler to control the area, and Apollodotus II, his immediate predecessor. Two of his silver issues adopt a new and more elevated form of titulature, the Greek Basileos Basilian Megalau Mau of the great king of kings, Maus with its corresponding Prakrit version in Kharosti. Raj Aiti Rajasa Mahatsa Mausa. Successive issues follow the Indo-Greek practice, adding the equivalent titles Maharajasa Mausa in Kharosti on the reverse. His successors, Aziz I, Aziz II, and Aziz II, frequently referred to him as the great king of kings which is a higher title. It has been concluded from this numismatic information that Maus was the first known Saka ruler of the Punjab and that his coin types were continued by Aziz II and Aziz II, who also took some other Indo-Greek types that Maus had not copied. Aziz, who followed Maus, successfully attacked Hippostratos the final Greek king in northern India. The history of Maus successors is suggested by numismatic sources. It suggests that Vanonines, who may have been a younger contemporary of Maus, ruled in alliance with his brother Supala Hara and his nephew Supala Gadama in the eastern border region of Iran and Arachosia. Supala rises, the Greek name for Supala Hora and his son Supala Gadama were among Vanona's successors. Supalirissa then started his reign, first as the brother of the king, then by himself, and last in partnership with a man by the name of Aziz. The Saka Pahlava monarchy may have reached as far as Kabul during this time from Arachosia. It is difficult to, to adequately define the bond between Moise and Aziz first. Many academics have suggested that the two kings came from separate racial lines. Stian Kanao claims that Moise a Saka and Aziz a Pahlava were the successors of Saka monarch Moga in the Taxila region. However, Taran believes that Aziz first was Apala Risa's son and that both of them were of the Saka race. Additionally, according to Rapson, the first three Saka kings, Moise, Aziz first, and Azilizis belonged to the same class and shared a strong numismatic affinity. Numismatists have even distinguished the existence of two kings called Aziz. The Sakas and Indo-Parthians type of the king on horseback holding a couched spear, while Aziz II has the horseman holding an upright whip. Copper coins of Aziz I are overstruck by Azilizis showing that Aziz first preceded Azilises. Although most scholars refer to the Vikrama era, which began in 58 BC, Louis and D. Louis claims that the period began with the Yuchi conquest of Bactria in 129 BC. Similar to the Shahdor inscription, the Taxila silver vase refers to a great Kushan king and contains a date beginning with Ayasa, which Marshall, another scholar translated as in the era of Aziz. Marshall's hypothesis of an era established by Aziz I is now confirmed by the Kharoshti inscriptions published by Fassman, which bears the dates Ayasa Atidasa and Ayasa Purva Kalisa. The Saka Empire was consolidated and 
reformed on the Indus after Vikramaditya stopped their further advance. So it is confusing that Aziz first should use an era establishing to mark the expulsion of the Sakas from Malwa. As a result, it more likely refers to the accession date of Aziz first around the same time. Aziz first's coinage was categorized into three major mints. Pushkalavati in Gandhara, Taxila and the Middle Indus province. He retained the square copper coins and silver values that the Indo-Greeks had used in the provinces. But his obvious design featured the Saka ruler riding a horse instead of a conventional royal picture. It should be noted that in the Indus provinces, Azlizis replaced Aziz I as king of kings. Due to several conjoint coins minted, Taran claims that Aziz I considered Azlizis and himself to be co-rulers. However, the alleged joint coinage is irregular and could just be the continued use of old dies upon Azilis' accession. The three mints used by Aziz I were also used to produce coins by Azilis. In North Pakistan and Kashmir, as well as in the Mohammed Hoard and with the coins of Aziz I, Aziz II, Hermes and the Parthian ruler Oredis II, his similar tetradimers have been discovered in hoards alongside those of the Indo-Greek king Hippocytratus. A Roman denarius of Augustus struck between 2 BC and 814 was discovered within Azilis' drachm in Sutupa Fourth at the Dharma Rajika at Taxila region. Azilis succeeded Aziz I and Aziz II was immediately after him. According to evidence from over strikes and stratified findings at Taxila, he continued to use the Aziz first verse type, which depicts the king holding a cochet lens, but later switched to the new verse type, which depicts the king with a whip and was carried on by Aziz II. Aziz II succeeded as king of kings in the Indus kingdom and presumably expanded his power to include the regions of Jalalabad and Gardez. It is interesting to note that the regions of Jalalabad and Gardez have reported finding hoards of Aziz II copper and silver coins. For his silver issues from Taxila, he employed the Zeus knife forest reverse type, while for his mint in Gandhara, he used the Pala's kindness. There was a significant debasement of the Saka silver coinage at the end of his long rule. Drachimus of Aziz II of the Zeus knife forest type were struck in huge quantities and are highly prevalent in findings from North Pakistan. They were first struck in base silver and afterwards in bullion, a debased alloy of silver and copper in which silver contributes only around 20%. A number of regional satraps and Sitradgoi, including Junoka and Rajuvola and the Sitragoi Indra Varma and Aspa Varma, copy the coinage at the same time. As a result, several of Aziz's second coin designs were replicated by the Kushana king Kujala Khadpisis, and both his Indo Parthian and Kushan successors continued to use the Aziz era for a while probably because they wanted to claim a connection to the Aziz dynasty. The Sakas established their hegemony across the country, although they were only able to maintain it for roughly four centuries in Western India. Rudradaman was the most well-known Saka king of Western India. Sindh, Kach, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Konkan, the Narmada Valley, Malwa, Kathiwar and the Western Deccan were all under his rule. The famous Junagadh inscription, which was written in 150 AD, highlights his military prowess, his holdings, and many other traits. The rapiers that his officials made to the broken Mauryan Dam of Sudarshana Lake in the semi arid region of Kathiwar are also mentioned in detail in this inscription. 
Since the Moria era, this lake has been used for irrigation purposes. The first significant inscription in Sanskrit is this lengthy one. Up until the end of the 4th century AD, the Sakas remained in power in this region after his passing. The Satrap system of governance, which was akin to the Achaemenid and Seleucid systems in Iran, was brought by the Sakas and the Parthians. The kingdom was divided into provinces under the control of a military governor known as Mahashatrapa under this system. Lower status governors were referred to as Shatrapas. These governors produced their own coins in addition to issuing their own inscriptions. This suggests a status that is more independent than would often be the case in an administrative structure. Shatrapas and Mahashatrapas, governors or subordinate rulers who were significant in the growth and consolidation of the empire, were used by the Sakas and Scythoparthians. Rajuvala, for instance, is likely responsible for the Scythoparthian authorities eastward advance into the Mathura region during Azilis' rule. Although Rajuvala first had the title of Shatrapa and later Mahashatrapa, he effectively became an autonomous ruler in the Mathura region, and his son Sadosha succeeded him. From their coins and inscriptions, we can identify a number of more Shatrapas. The impressive titles the Saka rulers adopted from the Greeks included Kings of Kings, Raja Adiraja, and Great King Maharaja. As a result of these rulers, who are primarily from Central Asia, exercising political dominance over the northern and northwestern regions of India, new components of culture, administrative tools, trade, technology, art forms, etc. have also been introduced. These components were subsequently assimilated into mainstream Indian civilization. With this, we end today's lecture. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.